Hello, Internet. This is Andy Schatz again uh, with my second video log regarding Monaco, which is a top-down stealth uh, 2D game um, that recently won the IGF Grand Prize and the Excellence in Design Award. Yay! Um, I'm wearing my I'm a Super Duper Programmer shirt today um, because today is my first day back at development. Um, after dealing with emails and phone calls and all of the PR and business related nonsense that goes along with this sort of thing. So anyways, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, uh, fun stuff. Um, but it is a little bit hoity-toity, so if you don't like um, hoity-toity game designy type uh, stuff, you should uh, stop watching this video right now. Um, so what I wanted to talk about is something that um, John Blow actually has gotten fairly famous for in terms of design philosophy. Um, and that is taking all the elements of the media in your game, including story and art and sound and all of that stuff, and actually make it speak or communicate in some way with the game mechanics themselves. Um, it's one thing to make the, the look and feel um, sort of tie into the story and tie into the audio, um, tie into the theme of the game. It's another thing entirely to um, make those things tie into the actual mechanics of the game or the feel of the mechanics of the game. Um, that's not necessarily a, always an easy thing to do. Um, and I think partly games tend not to do that sort of thing because mechanics tend to get rehashed a lot. Um, so what are the actual, what's the feel of the mechanics in Monaco? Um, and what is it that I'm trying to get across thematically with those mechanics? And then uh, the thing I wanted to talk about after that is what, um, what can I do within the art style in order to accomplish uh, in order to, to sort of further uh, further enhance the flavors of those themes. Um, and, and what I'm talking about here is mechanic-based themes, not just uh, themes in the world. Um, so when you're talking about the mechanics of Monaco, um, stealth games are all about what you can and can't see, um, and dealing with the... Uh, dealing with, with what you know and what you don't know. Um, and um, what other characters know and what they don't know. In general, in a stealth game, um, your knowledge sort of mirrors the knowledge of your enemies. Um, and so it's a question of what you do with that knowledge and how you collect that knowledge that, uh, that determines how well you play the game. Um, you, could also take a look, you could also look at it in terms of risk and reward. The more that you're willing to uh, risk revealing yourself in the environment, um, the more likely you are to be able to steal a whole bunch of stuff and then get out alive. Um, so, oh boy, it's always embarrassing to walk past people when I'm doing these videos. Um, so, there, I'm past my person. Um, so anyways, um, uh, the, the, in terms of theme, how I'm trying to evoke that idea of, of, um, uh, quickly shifting um, knowledge spheres, I guess you could say, um, is that the the story itself is is a somewhat sort of twisty, turny um, a story about what do you know and what do you don't what what don't you know, what can you trust and what can you not trust, and those are the sorts of themes that come across in the in the game in terms of the visibility mechanic. Um, as you walk around, you've got this very complex scene that is lighting up and darkening down in terms of what you know and what you don't know. Um, and, uh, and, and that sort of affects the presentation of the game and, and really d drives the, the basic mechanic of the game, um, which is stealth. So this might seem sort of obvious um, at this point, but um, it, it leads to a, a second question about how do I actually present the game from an artistic perspective, um, which actually is a little bit harder. Um, it, it, it's certainly easy to well, you can split up the art um, and how you how you get a mechanic across in visual art um, between two things. Um, one is the static art, um, which is what the artist actually paints, um, and the second is the presentation of the art, which is generally related to the animation or uh, you know the shaders or basically how you're actually presenting the art on the screen. Um, and and the stuff I was talking about before with with regards to lighting and visibility really is about presentation of the art. So how do I take those same themes and bring them into the static art itself? Um, 
that's a much harder question to answer. How do you evoke the idea of, of um, shifting knowledge um, in static art? So, um, as you've probably seen in the screenshots, there's um, there's uh, the, the, the blueprint look, um, which is intended to say, um, I've been here, but I don't really know what it is um, because I can't actively see it. Um, and then there's the, the stuff you can actively see. And so what I'm trying to move towards is making those two types of visuals quite distinct from one another. And then the, uh, the stuff that you can actually see um, is, is all in full color. And the question is, how do I evoke the idea of, of, of true knowledge, um, something very distinct? I know this, this is a fact, um, rather than the, the fuzzier feeling of, I've been here, but I don't know what's there right now, of the blueprints. Um, well, that's, a, that's a harder question, um, but the way that I'm trying to answer it is by using uh, a geometric look um, with hard edges um, and squares and, and, and shapes and lines. Um, and, uh, and that's supposed to also evoke the idea that all of the game is based upon the tiles themselves. And so it sort of goes in this big circle between uh, the theme of, of, of knowledge um, and lack of knowledge and then the tiles, which is sort of the, the technical mechanic of the game, um, back over to the look, um, and the look being based upon shapes and, and squares um, themselves. Um, now, the problem here with the static art is that when you're dealing with just shapes, and you're dealing with a lot of shapes, and you're dealing with a very active presentation, um, as, as it, the, the screen is very active in Monaco, sometimes it's a little hard to tell what things are. Um, the, the, uh, I guess the art director from Spore took a look at the game the other day, um, and uh, he, he got shot because he thought that the guards were refrigerators, um, and that's not a good thing. You, you've got to be able to, I mean, if the point of the, the visual, of the, the, the areas that you can see is that it's very clear what things are, you can't have that sort of confusion going on. So at any rate, that's sort of the challenge that's in front of me. I don't have the answer for it yet but it's something I'm exploring as we speak. Yeah, if you have any ideas for um, how, to, how to change the visuals given that sort of philosophical background on, on the game, uh, let me know in the comments or on the Facebook page or the Twitter. Facebook.com slash Monaco is mine or Twitter.com slash Monaco is mine. Uh, again, my name is Andy Schatz and I'm making a game called Monaco. Thanks for watching. Bye.